hi harsh uh, i hope you're doing well thank you for accepting the invite to the episode and it's great to have you here so let's start by your introduction so could you please introduce yourself for yeah. our audience yeah, actually thank you so much for having me it's a pleasure to be here i'm harsh bhargav a robotics developer who has had the privilege of working on some amazing projects including an isro's lunar rover mission my journey into robotics uh, began from a young age when i was captivated by how machines could be programmed to perform different tasks i'm currently pursuing btech from bit sindri it's in india okay okay so how did you how did you get into robotics why robotics yeah actually uh, it actually it actually uh, came to me naturally and uh, my journey into robotic uh, as i told you my journey into robotics started at a young age driven by my curiosity how these complex systems work i pursued this interest through academic projects and personal experiments also which eventually led me to work on some really exciting projects where i contributed to the software division focusing on ros based frameworks i've always been fascinated by the blend of software and hardware and that passion continues to fuel my work in robotics so uh, you mentioned that you you worked on a few good projects so would you like to talk about yeah. your most amazing project yeah uh, my most amazing project is uh, i told you uh, this is also lunar rover uh, actually uh, this was an autonomous lunar rover made by my team uh, included of 10 members okay and uh, i worked in this team as a software developer which uh, works in ros based frameworks as i told you okay and uh, we just uh, mix up the hardware part and software part to uh, build this rover okay so what was your contribution with uh, robotic software yeah robotic software based on ros okay and what are you currently studying or did you complete your studies uh, i didn't complete it yet uh, so i'm a third year bit student and what's your branch and my branch is uh, dental engineering okay so you you what how did you come to know about this isro project how did i what motivated you that you want to take part in it actually uh, from my young age i i had already uh, talked to you probably that I, i was interested in these kind of things uh, like robotics and uh, coding kind of things from my young age and i found this post from linkedin that uh, isro is conducting a challenge that is isro robotics challenge so i convinced me and my team also that uh, it will be a very good opportunity to do this kind of project that uh, from that we are uh, we started doing this project okay i understand and for those of you who don't know isro is indian space research organization yeah. and they do conduct such competitions where you have to make your own rover or there are tasks they they provide a description and you, your team has to create a rover to fulfill those tasks so how was your journey what uh, how did it go did you finish the project or what's going on yeah actually we finished uh, that project uh, during the robotics challenge there was a timeline to complete this project and we completed it successfully uh, and gone to the final but we couldn't uh, make it to the winner because of some mal- malfunctioning of our uh, main uh, cpu okay yeah. if you don't mind me asking what happened what malfunction yeah. yeah actually our cpu malfunction due to ssd okay what were you using as cpu yeah. uh we were using uh, nvidia dexon nano as cpu okay so i think you also have a picture to share so would you please share your screen and then talk about the rover what what it looks like what it's made of and what are the sensors yeah, on board yeah sure okay yeah so it's a okay it is now yeah so this is our rover uh, made up of the aluminum basic 6060 grade okay this is the uh, aluminum which is generally used in aircraft okay and uh, these are our six wheel configuration and differential drive system okay and this uh, as you can see this is our 5 degree operating robotic arm Uh, as you can see, uh, there is a camera over here uh, for the object detection part. And uh, using this and our lidar sensor, this is uh, if you can see, this is uh, our RP lidar. And uh, using these two and uh, some sort of sensors like uh, IMU sensors and proximity sensors, uh, we detect our environment and uh, we have completed the mapping and localization of the rover. Okay. How did you choose this material for the chassis? Why this material? It's new to me, so please tell me more about it. Yeah, actually, uh, our team researched this one. Okay, uh, we researched uh, accordingly uh, what we need to do, what ISRO asked us to do. Uh, from that, we have taken the idea and uh, we implemented it on rover. We use a media system that's named as our main CPU, so that we can uh, calculate and compute that object detection model and uh, run it smoothly without any lagging. Okay, okay. and uh, we use some LoRa uh, transceiver modules to transmit some data, and uh, after getting data, we can convert it into uh, different type of graphs so that so that we can observe it. Okay, what's going on inside the rover and uh, on the environment. Okay, okay. and uh, we actually then uh, 3D printing on making this rover. Uh, like our six wheels are also 3D printed. Here you can see this is a, a TQ printer. TQ is a general material which is uh, used to do 3D printing. Okay, this is a thermoplastic material actually. Okay, okay. which is the kind of rubbery material uh, which we use to do 3D printing to absorb the shock uh, driven by the rover. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I used uh, some linear actuator in our robotic arm and uh, some sort of servo motors to um, move it uh, into its workspace. Okay, so you have custom designed the gripper and the arm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And why did you choose this design for the rover? What What is the motivation behind that? Yeah, actually, uh, our task is to pass some uh, some sort of crater, some sort of uh, obstacles. So for that, uh, it is if you you know this is a rocket bogey mechanism. Yeah. Uh, like we learn in uh, robotics and theory of machines is a subject of mechanical engineering, yes. in which we learn about rocket bogey. Okay, rocket mechanism. 
viscosity is okay so we use this kind of water bogging mechanism so that we can stabilize our rover uh, if it's going into the crater or passing through the obstacle it will stabilize it actually okay, okay. for somebody who don't know what rocket bogging is can you explain it in you know brief yeah rocket bogging is a mechanism of bogging is a kind of you know uh, there is a chassis and a frame is attached to that that chassis that is bogging but rocket mechanism is a mechanism in which uh, frame oscillates and don't move completely 360 degree okay it just move uh, it just oscillate around the point okay i see that's what you can see here. like uh, this is a uh, point of movement and this is a point of movement so that we can stabilize uh, our rover okay and all are are all the wheels actuated yeah all the wheels are were actuated okay and what was the logic behind this box type of frame of the entire rover was it properly well thought design uh what i don't know the, the design of the rover is a square ish yeah. box so yeah. what was the reason behind such a design actually we researched on uh, some sort of kind of jjs uh, okay like uh, we have some aerodynamic designs also to uh, reduce the mass but uh, according to the requirement we needed some uh, good space that's why we used square type of jjs uh, okay. okay i see how did you know what to learn what resources did you use uh, actually uh, when when we were starting this project we didn't know much about robotics and uh, what uh, what is ros okay okay then we started researching it on like uh, what is ros and uh, how did it work we uh, we put our day and night to uh, fuel our motivation and to learn ros we we go through some sort of courses like udemy and youtube also there there were some resources so that uh, from where we uh, we have learned how to automate this how to automate robotic arms uh, using ros uh, we actually use ros noetic in this rover yeah okay why why ros yeah. and why yeah. not ros 2 yeah because uh, basically as we know ros no- ros 1 uh, was made to do research and ros 2 is for development okay uh, but we moved to ros noetic because there were so many uh, development programs already done in ros 1 okay ros 2 is new uh, yes uh, there were some new packages in ros 2 and some inbuilt packages in ros 2 but uh, uh, we we were having some sort of experience in ros 1 that's why uh, we wanted to go with ros 1 and our nvidia jetson nano also supports uh, ros 1 okay that makes sense and how did yeah. you communicate to this rover uh we we communicated this rover by using ros nodes okay and some uh, wifi modules okay through rf frequency radio frequency as per requirement by us okay understood yeah and what what did you use for the navigation what navigation stack did you use yeah we actually use uh, ros uh, ros uh, nautic navigation stack as you know uh, ros have navigation stack and we used uh, it to navigate through the whole map and uh, after that we automated it using uh, our mapping and localization algorithm okay okay and you mentioned that a team of 10 people did this so how were the tasks divided who was doing what just roughly yeah yeah actually uh, we have our subsystems in our rover like uh, there were uh, design and analysis team which were uh, continuously working on the design and analysis of the rover how this will work okay uh, there were a mechanical team where uh, they worked for the manufacturing of this rover how this will be manufactured okay and uh, there were uh, electronic subsystem which worked into how pcb is designed in this rover and uh, how all electrical uh, wiring all this how all this works okay and there was a software division that how to automate it how to make it navigate through some waypoints okay and you i think you mentioned that you were the team lead am i correct yeah so how did you manage the entire team how did you you know make the team work actually uh, in starting of this project there uh, there were so many problems like uh, uh, in collaborating with te- uh, team members like uh, uh, we should uh, make it as a team but uh, we didn't uh, that much qualified with that much skills so uh, we collaborate slowly and slowly and uh, after that uh, we worked uh, 
so much um, it can it will work uh, so good that's why it takes some time okay okay and did you have you know your professors mentoring you about this did you have any industry mentor for this project yeah uh, we were having some industry mentor pro, uh, in this project and our professors also they helped us uh, a lot in this project uh, mostly in mechanical part but in software part uh, we were handling it by own okay and that was through watching youtube videos and just reading and doing your own research YouTube videos and uh, some sort of courses and research papers okay got it yeah and the courses were related to ross or something else as yeah. well yeah yeah it's only it was only ross okay and i don't i don't think the code would be open source for this project right uh, no it's uh, it's not an open source okay okay so you mentioned that there were a lot of problems when you started this project and i'm sure there there must yeah. be so what were the yeah. major problems or the challenges that you faced you know first handling the team and while doing the technical yeah. work and how did you resolve that yeah actually when we started uh, this project our first stage is to qualify the proposal stage uh, and while making the proposal uh, all our team members were not participating in making the proposal report but uh, we told them and we uh, tell them a visit we told them a visit and after that uh, they were working so hard and researching and uh, they were giving their inputs as required and uh, from there we qualified uh, our proposal report and after that uh, we have to qualify that uh, second second round that is quals one and quals one is a kind of design report round in which uh, we we had to put some our design report like uh, how the rover designed and uh, what is the electronic design Uh, what motor drivers you use how you printed your wheels and all of that so uh, it was the work that uh, our team put it in okay? okay and after that we moved to manufacturing part uh, there were some members who uh, actually didn't work in this project so we actually replaced them okay yeah. how did you go about this is is that why didn't you try to make them work or were they not interested how did you decide that okay we need yeah. to let them let them go yeah because uh, they were also putting their efforts but uh, actually in my opinion i think they were the final year students and uh, they, they were focusing on their placements that's why they didn't participate it, it in much okay okay and what was the approximate cost for making this entire rover uh the budget of this rover is actually uh, around 2 lakhs okay and the the money was funded by your university or did you all chip in yeah uh, university and alumni also okay Th- that's really good so you looks like that you learned a lot yeah we learned we actually learned a lot during this project that's that's so good to know that's the main thing yeah so what advice would you give to someone who is just starting out i mean if if there's someone who don't know what to do to begin their journey let's say i am in my first year and i want to do something in yeah. my third year so how do i start uh, actually for someone just starting it out i recommend getting hands on with simple electronic devices and robotics kit like uh, arduino or uh, raspberry pi starts doing small projects and learn basic uh, programming skills like uh, you should learn python th- that is a really uh, good programming language for robotics you can learn c++ also but firstly i will say like uh, you should uh, acquire some sort of mechanical knowledge of how robot works what is degree of freedom what is joints and links i'll suggest this and after that you can go through the programming language python and urdf how description model works and uh, there you can understand uh, how, what is the importance of mechanical part 
Okay. I I guess your answer is skewed towards mechanical because you are a mechanical engineer. But I would like to ask you a question about that. Since you are a mechanical engineer, you probably must not be taught Python or programming in general. So how did you yeah. learn all these? Because I think your role was robotic software and yeah. you are not taught that at university particularly. So how did you do it? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, I started uh, my B.Tech journey in mechanical engineering, but actually I was a programmer before my university starts. Okay, uh, I was a, I was actually a web developer, but after uh, ensuring that uh, we are, we are going to participate in this uh, project, we were started learning uh, ROS based framework and navigation framework from different courses. Uh, we were starting learning the mechanical part, how robotics works, what is uh, degree of freedom and how robotic arm works, what is workspace and all of these things. Uh, we started learning during this project also. And uh, actually, I, I, I was a, a coder also from starting. So uh, it didn't create much problem for me. Okay. So how, how can a mechanical engineer get into programming what should be their first step because they have to balance their mechanical yeah. academics as well plus how do they start yeah. i think you suggested python but in my opinion python and c++ should be given preference so what do you think about that yeah uh, see everyone can learn programming languages python and c++ both are good but uh, python is uh, easier easier way to learn robotics okay Python is a way easier programming language uh, than C++. That's why I suggested Python language, Python programming language for a mechanical engineer to work it on. Okay. But not many industry use Python for, you know, production level code. Most of them rely on C++. Yeah. So, Super. yeah. if that's the goal yeah, actually, to work in industry, why would somebody spend yeah. a lot of time learning Python? Actually, uh, if someone learns a programming language, he or she knows how programming language works. Okay. And uh, after learning robotics in a certain programming language, like if you're learning uh, robotics in Python programming language. Okay. So you know how programming languages work and how ROS works. Okay. And once a programmer learn, learns a programming language, he or she can switch to another programming language easily because he or she knows how programming languages work okay okay so you yeah. you you mean to say that oh by the way you can sh unshare your screen now we are just talking yeah. so you mean to say that it is important to learn programming concepts rather than a programming language among languages python is considered to be one of the easiest language to learn as a beginner yeah but to learn programming concepts is more important than the language and I agree with yeah. that because no matter who you are and what your background is you need to have some programming experience and at least know all the concepts including object oriented programming because that's what used in the industry and you should know that so thanks for that I'm sure you, in this entire journey this is a big project, a major project. In this entire journey, you must have yeah. faced, you know, challenges which made you feel like just I just want to give up. It's not going to work out. Yeah. So how did you overcome that? And what if somebody else is going through the same thing in their project? What would you advise them? Yeah, uh, there was some situation uh, in which we thought that we couldn't make it uh, how the autonomous systems will work in our rover, how this will work. Uh, we couldn't uh, manage to do some sort of uh, electronics or software thing. So uh, actually we didn't think that uh, uh, how this will done, how this will get done by uh, offering some sort of professors. But uh, we just delved deep into this concept. We revised our concept and we uh, we were putting same thing on uh, repeatedly on our ROS based uh, programming. Okay, so that helps us a lot to uh, ensure that uh, we didn't get an error or any problems. We just get in, get deeper and deeper. 
into that program okay. as well. Okay, so you just stuck onto the problem and try to solve it no matter what. Keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, just find the root of that uh, problem and uh, work into it. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. And yeah. I I think a lot of time commitment was involved in this project. So. Yeah. How much time did it take you to, you know, how much time did you spend on this project and when did you used to do it and did it affect your academics? Yeah, actually, uh, it actually affects my academics and this project uh, is of eight months of duration. So, yeah, it actually affects my, uh, some sort of academics, uh, CGP or SGP, whatever you can say. Okay, so how much time did you invest in this per week? Yeah, actually around uh, um, around uh, 30 to 40 hours we spend in this project per week. That That is amazing because 40 hours a week is like a full-time job and you have to attend yeah, classes yeah, and, to and you have to you know study for the exams. Yeah. Because probably this is like two semester worth of time. It's... Yeah. It's it's massive. So, yeah. Would you recommend somebody to join such a project? Because I think most universities participate in these challenges and they have a team. So, would you recommend somebody? Yeah, surely, uh, I guess uh, everyone pursuing BTEC or any engineering related courses uh, should participate in these kind of projects because. Uh, when you will get some hands-on project, you will get ideas how industry works and how robotics works, whatever you do. Like, uh, uh, I'm also interested in space exploration and currently working on a rocket project also. So, okay. uh, everyone should uh, work on to these kind of projects so that they can get ideas how these all, all these things work. Okay, for sure. that That's good advice. And I'm sure you are... Uh you are willing to guide people who reach out to you after this episode is aired. Sure, sir. That's great. So, I think we can wrap up the project part. Let's just talk for a few minutes about you. What's What's next for you? What are you going to do? Do you want to pursue a job or do you want to go for higher studies? Yeah, I want to go for a research. Okay. Uh, after BTEC, uh, I want to go for a ISRO. After BTEC, uh, I'll give uh, exams of ISRO. And I want to join ISRO to do some research on it, on okay. rocket science technology. That is great. Not a lot of people say this. So, wish you the best. Thanks for taking the time out and sharing your experiences and sharing your projects. It was good, good to have you here. And uh, good luck. Thank you. Yeah. So, thank you.